Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And Libby, thank you for introducing me, but most important, thank you for, for 41 years standing at my side and helping us have one of the greatest families and a family that I am just so proud of. Thank you all for being here. God bless you. You're the reason that I am here this morning to help your futures be better futures. As I look around this room, I see so many friends from Peekskill in New York State, from Texas and Illinois, and of course from across New Hampshire. Thank you all for being here. Many of you helped me get elected as governor of New York three times, and you're here again. Thank you for your loyalty. Y también a todos mis amigos que están con nosotros hoy. Gracias por su apoyo. Gracias siempre. Gracias, amigas, siempre por la gente. We're here in Exeter, New Hampshire, birthplace of the Republican Party, Abraham Lincoln's party who saved the Union and who brought the promise of freedom to all Americans, Teddy Roosevelt's party, who fought for the square deal so that the rich and powerful couldn't limit the freedom of working Americans, and Ronald Reagan's party, who restored Americans' belief in ourselves and in the transcendent value of freedom, the freedom that has given us the greatest country the world has ever known, the freedom that a man named Amos Tuck declared the foundation of that party right here in Exeter, New Hampshire. The same freedom that I fear is at risk today from an ever more powerful, more intrusive government in Washington. It is to preserve and protect that freedom for us that I stand here today. It is to preserve and protect... It is to preserve and protect that freedom for future generations that I speak. It is to preserve and protect that freedom that this morning I announce I am a candidate for the Republican nomination for President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When people think of New York, they generally think of New York City, and I understand that. But my upbringing was quite different. I grew up in a small farm in a small town in the Hudson Valley called Peekskill, New York. <laughs> my four grandparents were all immigrants who went through Ellis Island. Peekskill's wealth wasn't in its money, but in its people black and white, Christian and Jew, both rural and urban at the same time. We weren't wealthy, we weren't well connected, we weren't well known. And yet every one of us growing up in that small town believed the American dream, believed in hard work, and believed in ourselves. We believed, no, we really knew that if we dreamed something, we could do it. If we worked hard, studied hard, had faith, family, and friends encouraging us, Nothing could be beyond our reach. We believed in the American dream, and it was real. My father was a mailman. When he went to first grade, he couldn't speak one word of English. No one ignored him or lowered their expectations. Instead, they helped him learn the skills he needed to succeed. My mother had to turn down a scholarship to Cornell because it was the depth of the depression and she was the only one in the family working. So she took a job as a waitress. By the way, my mother is 99 and at home doing great. And she is watching this live right now on C-SPAN. So mom, thank you. They never saw themselves as victims. They were Americans. And though they might not have had every real opportunity for themselves,
They knew that their children could accomplish anything. My brother Lou and I worked on our farm as kids. When I was in college during Christmas and summer vacations, I worked at the Fleischmann's factory with my cousin Bobby. And in the, in the evenings and weekends, we'd come home and work on the farm with our other cousins. For my dad, working two jobs was the norm. He'd leave the house five in the morning, deliver mail during the day, come home and work on the farm until it was dark. And then if the alarm rang in the middle of the night, he'd answer the bell as captain of our volunteer firefighters. It wasn't always easy for them. But today, my brother's an astrophysicist, and I am a candidate for the highest office in our country. <laughs> this is the promise of unlimited opportunity America held for my family and for me. It is that promise of unlimited opportunity, that belief in America which I want to restore for every family and every child and every community in America today. Today. Today, too many Americans feel the best days of America are behind us. That our children aren't going to have the same opportunities that we did. Government has grown too big too powerful, too expensive, too intrusive. Washington politicians and bureaucrats believe they know better than us and can tell us how to live our lives from what health care each of us must have to trying to dictate to every child in every school what they must learn. A young mother seeking to start a small business is inundated with oppressive paperwork and regulations and gives up. A small manufacturer seeking to build the next plan and create American jobs is faced with excessive taxation and forced to build that factory overseas. Too many Americans feel the path of opportunity is closed to them. We must make sure it's not. The problems we face are real, but I've never been one to dwell on problems. I'm a solutions guy. When you grow up on a farm and you have a problem, you don't ask the government to solve it. You just fight, figure out what needs to be done and go do it. That's the American way. If I have the honor to lead this country, let me tell you some of the things I do right away to get oppressive government off the backs of Americans. Today, there's one former member of Congress lobbying for every current member. And the first thing I would do is say that if you ever served one day in Congress, you will never be a lobbyist. There will be a lifetime ban on members of Congress ever becoming <laughs> lobbyists. I'd repeal oppressive laws like Obamacare and end Common Core. I'd eliminate excessive taxes that crush small business. I'd throw out an incomprehensible tax code written by lawyers at the direction of lobbyists in the interest of the powerful and replace it with a simpler, lower rates that are fair for all of us. I'd lower taxes on manufacturers to the lowest in the developed world so that factories and jobs could spring up across America. And I'd shrink the size of the federal workforce, starting with the bureaucrats overseeing Obamacare. And I'd fire every current IRS employee abusing government power to discriminate on the basis of politics or religion. That is not America. And let's let every Washington politician know, from now on, you're going to live under the same rules and laws that we do. No exemptions for politicians from the laws they impose on us. No special rules for the powerful. Our Justice, our Justice Department 
will treat all fairly and uphold the Constitution. No one will be above the law, not even if you're a former Secretary of State whose name happens to be Clinton. Let's deliver a clear message to the politicians in Washington. You are our servants, not our masters. We do this and small business will thrive. We will make things and build things here in America again. We will create and innovate. Jobs will flourish and people's faith in America's future will soar. You know, some are going to say, you can't do this. That the course of history leads inexorably to bigger, more expensive, more powerful government. Don't you believe that for a second? They told me that when I ran for governor of New York. They said I couldn't win. Too many people were dependent on government. The bureaucrats and powerful interests were too strong. The people couldn't regain their confidence in New York's future. In a sense, they were right. They couldn't do it. But I knew I could, and we did. In 12 years, New York went from the state with the highest tax burden, the lowest credit rating, and billions of dollars in deficits to a state with $143 billion in lower taxes, billions in surplus, and its highest credit rating in generations. All it took was for me to get government out of the people's way. Seems like liberals have so much compassion for the poor, for the poor that they cre keep creating more of them. <laughs> when I took office, we had every poverty program government could think of. And yet, one in 11 of every single New York State resident was on welfare. Not on Medicaid or disability. One in 11 of every man, woman, and child in the state of New York from the tip of Long Island to the shores of Lake Erie were on welfare. The American dream did not seem real to them. But after 12 years of my conservative policies, we replaced dependency with opportunity, resignation with hope, mere existence with dreams, a welfare check with a paycheck. When I left office, over one million fewer people were on welfare than when I began. That's what our policies can do. Conservative policies replace dependency with opportunity in New York State. I know we can do the same thing for the United States. I was governor of New York on September 11th. It was a horrible time for us, and I'm sure for all of you as well. The personal loss was devastating. It still is. I saw up close the horrible consequences of too many believing that because radical Islam was thousands of miles away, across an ocean that we were safe in America. Sadly, it wasn't true then, and it's not true now. The most important thing government does is to provide for the security and safety of its citizens. Sadly, Washington is not doing that. I will not forget the lesson of September 11th. I fear too many in Washington all, already have. To protect us, first we must secure the border. Yes, I'm the proud product of immigrants, but we must know that everyone coming to America is coming here legally, and that everyone coming here is coming not to harm us, but to be a part of a better America. And in the face of an increasingly dangerous world, this is not the time to weaken America's military. It's time to strengthen our military. Not so that we can use it,
but so that we don't have to use it. A strong America is a safe America. Ronald Reagan proved that peace through strength is more than a slogan. Peace through strength is a policy that works. Weakness, equivocation, and false promises lead only to chaos, brutality, and war. The world is a better place when America is strong and a champion of liberty and freedom. <laughs> Allies and friends of America must know that our word is our bond. We will stand with our ally Israel, a democracy on the front lines of terror and barbarism. We will stand with our allies in NATO and the free Baltic states against the resurgent Russia. We will make sure the number one sponsor of state terror in the world, Iran, never has a nuclear weapon. We will provide whatever aid is necessary to those already fighting ISIS on the ground to stop their barbarism and inhumanity. And yes, if necessary, American forces will be used to actually defeat and destroy ISIS so they can pose no threat to us here. We will not spend a trillion dollars or a decade nation building overseas. But I will never forget the lesson of September 11th. We will destroy radical Islam's ability to attack us over there before they have the chance to attack us here. Our allies must trust us. Our enemies must fear us, and they will. We will defend our freedom, but we will not be the world's policemen. Libby and I have two sons, both of whom served overseas. Teddy as a Marine lieutenant deployed to Iraq for a year. Owen as a lieutenant in the 10th Mountain Division returning from Afghanistan just this past September. Please, we're proud of them. We're proud of every single person here who has put on the uniform to, defect our, to protect our freedom. To all our veterans, raise your hands. We salute you. God bless you. Libby and I know what it's like to lie awake dreading a call in the middle of the night when your child is in harm's way overseas. I do not want one parent, one husband, one wife, one child or loved one to experience that fear unless it's absolutely necessary. But we will do whatever is required to protect the American people. Well, the challenges facing America today are real. I've no doubt we will rise above them. Think of what this great country has overcome. Washington at Valley Forge, Lincoln trying to hold together a nation divided, Roosevelt facing both the Great Depression and Nazi Germany. Yes, the challenges of a large and oppressive government in Washington are real, but this is still America. The power of freedom is real. And compared to those challenges we've overcome in the past, these seem like trivial things. I have no doubt we will rise above these as well. Today, those in the other party, instead of offering ideas, seek to divide. When you have no solutions, instead you offer fear. They say we are anti-immigrant. We, the proud children and grandchildren and grand descendants of immigrants, we know that immigration has and will continue to enhance the greatness of this country.
Let's send that party a clear message. Unlike them, we don't believe that, this, that they come to this country so they can get a government handout. We know immigrants come to work, to strive, to build a life, better life for their families, and we welcome all who come here legally. They say we are against the middle class. This, too, is nonsense. Everyone here understands it's the men and women who go to work, pay the bills, and follow the rules that are the backbone of this country. We are the party of the middle class. Unless by middle class they mean someone who left the White House dead broke and 10 years later had $100 million. <laughs> Unless by middle class they mean someone who charges a poor country $500,000 for a half hour speech, that's their party's candidate. Yeah. She speaks for the middle class? They are the party of privilege. We are the party of the middle class. They are the party of the past. We must be the party of the future. I know that with the policies we believe in, we can change the world. Let the next decade be the decade when the American worker and innovators, the best workforce in the world, accomplish things we can only dream of. Let the next decade be the decade when Americans finally cure cancer and end for all time the scourge of Alzheimer's. Let the next decade be the decade, decade when American energy powers the world with our own clean, unlimited resources. Let the next decade be the decade when Americans travel from city to city in trains faster than planes, in cars that drive themselves and over paths we have yet to imagine. Let the next decade be the decade where Americans can have boundless economic growth while enhancing and preserving the natural environment. Let the next decade be the decade when America proves to the world you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> While I saw the horrors of September 11th firsthand, in the days, weeks, and months that followed, I also saw the strength of America on display. For those months, we were not Republicans, Democrats, black or white, young or old. We were Americans. We had been attacked, and we were going to stand together to show the world that we were unbowed, unafraid, and would come back stronger than ever. I completely reject the idea that we can only unite in adversity. We're so much better than that. I know we have true greatness within us because I have seen that greatness countless times. I have seen what Americans can do when we understand we share a common dream, a common future, a common destiny. I know that working together with the support of a government dedicated to restoring freedom rather than restraining it, we will once again astonish the world with what we can accomplish. Let us come together as Americans and unite to face the challenges ahead. Let us transcend those challenges and seize the unlimited opportunities the future holds. Let us move forward. So just as the dreams of that young child growing up in Peekskill, New York came true, so too the dreams of a young child born today, whether in downtown Baltimore or here in Nashua, New Hampshire, can come true. Stand with us. Let us go forward together. I guarantee you, the 21st century is going to be America's greatest century. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you.